No, you uh, ask the question about what do you use to get what do you use to, to get into the observer? No, it's it, um, the being in the observer or the witness, sir, um, is beyond all the tricks of the ego. But you can use the ego to get there. That's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, all my um, all my uh, videos on the observer tool are, you know, in some reference, I'm speaking to your ego, but then to invoke the observer of that. So I'm speaking to your ego because you're not. You wouldn't need to watch the video if you're in the observer in the beginning. So, or you've been in a constant state of enlightenment. So, so yeah, it's, you could say, like, what's observing my shape? Uh, you know, what's observing, um, uh, you know, or you can, you know, it's absolutely fine to use any trick that works to get you some, some way there. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, if you want to do a visualization, like, okay, can I picture myself sitting here and what's observing that? And then, okay, I'll get some more detachment now. And, okay, but is there an observer of that image of me? And then sometimes, you see, another... I don't really share about this too much. So, you know, the, I would say the Holy Spirit or grace of God op operates sometimes beyond the words to the intention. You know, sometimes if there is a, a Course in Miracles student, or an, I guess an observer student, and even if they use words which seem a bit funny, or they're doing practices which would be funny, but their intention, their silent intention is to be in the observer, to transcend it. You know, it's like, it's like the Holy Spirit understands what you're trying to do and will invoke. So even if you're going, let me visualize me now being sitting here, what's observing that? And then I suddenly get more detached from being in the drama of my head or my body or the environment. But is there something observing that visualization of me? And suddenly there's more detachment. Uh, and sometimes that can work. So that's absolutely fine to do visualization. Sometimes it's fine. Uh, things I do if I'm struggling to get an observer is watch a, usually watch a YouTube video of someone talking about the observer. That's what I do. And that can happen because, you know, I've had a long day. I don't want to sit down and practice being the observer. So I'll just watch a video of some, you know, I could even, even watching a video of myself, uh, you know, saying it if I'm too lazy to do it, I think would be useful. Another thing that people will say is like, because I've worked with people, is that they get bored of using the same avenue to get to the observer. Like, mm -hmm. if I just keep using, like, what's, what's visualising me as an observer, then after a while they say it's more difficult, because they get used of you using those exact same words to do it. I mean, just, just vary it vary the words. I often find, like if you pray, like an intuitive version, a slightly different version of doing it, like what's observing me, or what's observing my awareness, or what's observing the observer, or, or they use the word witnesser or perceiver. Is there, a wit is there a witnesser in this room which is witnessing everything? Uh, is there, is there, is Rather, you know, so is there a witness of everything in this room? So it's a slightly different way of doing it, rather than the usual way, which is, let me see what I am and what's witnessing me. Is there a witness of the room? So, so you can vary it from different things. You know, I've got lots of videos on them. Just listen to me say different angles. I was sharing with another person the other day with the observer, uh, rather than say observer and witnesser, like for me, uh, and I haven't really shared about this in the group. Okay, I'll share a bit about it now. There's a different avenue to get to the observer, which is being inward. And I haven't found a way of describing it properly, but, you know, when I'm in my thoughts, it's like I'm attached to something outside of me. Does that make sense? Or when I'm identified with what people are saying and doing in the room, I'm identified with something even more further out of me. When I'm, uh, when I'm identified with my pictures, I'm still identified with, there's a more inner aspect to being identified in images than me, yeah? So really, on a, on a, on a basis, what I'm trying to do is go inward. So I, I repeat, uh, this seems it's appropriate, St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. Okay, so the more you look out into the world and identify with the room, the more you identify with your thoughts, the more you identify with your body and the limits of your body, you're looking outward, you're identifying outward. So another way to do it is like, okay, let me experience what I am and what's more inner than this. Is there, is there, an, inner, is there an inner thing I can be which is before 
the, the me that I am now, which feels more out of me. Does that make sense? Mm. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, it's not making Could, sense. Can you say it again? Yeah. Okay. So however I identify in this moment, whatever I'm experiencing, if I'm experiencing thoughts, or if I'm trying to pick up visual information from the world, then uh, non-verbally, rather than be identified with what's going on in the room and my thoughts, I'll, like, I'll even close my eyes and go, well, what's, what's the more inner aspect of myself which is not identified with thoughts and feelings and pictures and what's going on in the room? There must be something more deeper in me, you see. So we're going on a journey inwards, you know, like to be identified with pictures and thoughts and what's going on in the room is identified with the world. To be identified with thoughts, so that's the most outward thing then to be identified with thoughts is like a layer more inward. So we're going more in from being identified with the world to being identified with thoughts. But if I'm identified in my thinking, what's more inner than my thinking? Is there, some, is there an inner plane? Is there an inner space that's even before my thinking, before I get lost in my thinking? So that's inner. So then if I feel like, oh, this sense of peace, yeah, coming in, more lo non-local, uh, peace, then okay, but is there something even before the peace, like more inner to the peace, more prior to peace, more inwards, where I'm not in something more outwards? Does that make sense? Mm. Well, I think that people look a bit lost. Um, I think so, it's probably really but a lot harder than thinking at something outside of yourself looking at you. Yes. For me, it would be a bit harder knowing it's in me, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it is. It's a different so, approach. So yeah, so it's probably higher, it's a higher level, level yeah. once when you... Um, this morning, so continuing on what you've just said, this morning in A Course of Miracles, in yeah. the text, yeah. what I read was that if you knew who is walking beside you, yes. as in Holy Spirit, yes. you would never have, I'm paraphrasing that, but never feel another fear yes. or another thing again. Mm -hmm. And I mean, could you, for example, use Holy Spirit as... As, as that observer of you. And then because in Holy Spirit's world, everything is divine and wonderful and enlightened. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's, uh, that's like God, God is in everything I see. Mm -hmm. uh, or I see Christ in everything I see. Or, um, um, so yeah, that is another way of doing it. That's the Co Course in Miracles mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So God is in my bus, God is in the table, uh, God is in the flowers, uh, God is in the chair. So, so to see the divine in everything equally, in all places equally, then shuts down the ego because the ego is trying to compare, mm. saying that the boss is horrible, but the flower is nice. Mm. So once the labeling goes, even the labeling that boss bad and all the projections that go with boss. So if the boss is, hasn't got anything projected on him, you know, you, he might go into a state of bliss and see how beautiful he is and give him a kiss or something. But that might not be appropriate, so you want to be, get some spiritual discernment uh, before you do that. But, um, yeah, so that's another way. I'll just pray to the Holy Spirit to see the situation differently if you're having, mm -hmm. if you're having problems. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, beautiful. Sometimes saying, mind you, 